Hello everyone and welcome to another Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. We're in the final week before Mini Stravaganza takes over everything. Uh, but today we're just going to be putting some paint on a Winter Soldier from the upcoming Marvel Crisis Protocol Earth's Mightiest Core Set that'll be out in October. Uh, if I'm a little space today, it's because I just got back from vacation with family, so I'm in the brain fog of like no sleep, lots of activities, and now trying to get back into the swing of things. So I might stammer or mutter or whatever, who knows? Don't worry, I'm fine. I'm just getting over that travel brain fog. With that, let's go ahead and jump in and get some paint on this fabulous Bucky Barnes. So I'm using all Pro Acryl Monument paints today. We're gonna have some fun. Uh, I figured I'd just go for a pretty traditional look for our Bucky. Um, so we're just gonna be doing some various grays and blacks and get some blues in there and all that stuff. Um, I'm gonna start off with this, what was this one? Brown gray uh, for his pants, because I like to put on my pants first. So pants are where we're gonna start. I'm not gonna be too precious with this. But we want our Bucky here to be well-versed in hiding in the shadows. So, lots of dark colors. I briefly considered painting him like a, like a good old Hydragoon and giving him some very ostentatious like bright greens and yellows, but I decided against it for this one. I figured we'd just go a bit more a bit more muted. I didn't want to blow out everyone's color screens. That was all, all we wanted to do here, so. <sighs> Will there be streams on Tuesday and Wednesday? No, there'll be no streams Tuesday, Wednesdays. All of the streams will be on uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So, no additional content. We're going to be using Tuesday and Wednesday to get everything ready and prepped. Because um, Mini Strav, while it is super fun, is a really, really big um, a really, really big amount of effort for us to get everything ready and set to go and all that good stuff. So we always take our opportunity to take those couple of days beforehand and. Make sure everything's set, do some dry runs. So we're not doing everything purely live. It's not quite like our standard streams. We usually do some troubleshooting and we got overlays and people who don't always get the opportunity to wind up on camera all the time. So it's really awesome to get to hear from the rest of the team and have the folks who do a lot of the hard work that makes what we do on our weekly streams possible. So you're going to get a chance to hear from Marco, who runs our sculpting division and is responsible for bringing things like this Bucky here to Glorious Life in Plastic by overseeing the engineering teams and working with the factory and the production teams and stuff like that. So and Marco's always a blast to talk to you. So he'll be providing some insights on several of the panels. Of course, we've got our wonderful art director, Josh, who's coming in. We've got Maybe some surprise appearances from a couple other folks. Uh, the game dev staff is going to be talking about things. Dallas will be taking the opportunity of the longer stream times to dive into some really in-depth painting stuff. So that is always exciting and illuminating. It's going to be a good time. <gasps> of everything that's been shown on the schedule. What are you most excited to talk about? Hmm. Hmm. I was going to say, there's there's a lot of stuff to talk about, so. Yeah, is it a trap? I don't know. I it feel feels like, <laughs> like a trap. Um, I, I always get pretty excited for uh, the roadmaps. One, because it's cool to be able to share kind of expectations on where we're going and what neat things are coming up next. Um, but also because it's one of our few opportunities where, like I said, we get a lot of the voices and a lot of the people who are really responsible for doing so much of the work that creates the final uh, product that goes on store shelves for everybody, you know, from the art to the sculpts to the 
graphic design, all that stuff, like um, getting to kind of hang out and take a moment and look at those things and talk about what we're really excited about, maybe share some stories about how certain things came to be or what was there and what changed um, during the process. To me, that's always fun. It's fun to look back and kind of take a moment or two and, and really dive into the history or the the how it's made aspect of things. Um, I'm super excited so really for the Path of the Worthy panel. Oh, of course well. you are. Of yeah. course you are. <laughs> um, and not just because Dallas is here in chat uh, uh -huh. giving hype with us, but it's being able to, to, you know, sort of chat with Dallas as the plan comes together for what they're going to talk about. I think people are going to be excited about looking back at what actually happened during the first one um and you know looking forward to where where we're headed just like all the roadmaps it's it's going to be great yeah i think i mean if you've got any interest at all in really painting or hobby or art the artistic side of the the games we play in general like obviously anytime you can hear dallas talk about creative vision and art and everything it's it's always illuminating um and then is there anything selfishly i'm excited about i don't think so um like i said i think the roadmaps for me are always very fun because we just get to kind of chat i do always enjoy getting on camera with my fellow de developers and and getting to yammer and and debate kind of gaming philosophy, talk about how, um, you know, we approach rules and stuff like that. When it comes to creating characters, how those, how those philosophies change per game line, um, which really provides us a lot of opportunity to do, uh, to flex those muscles in different ways and approach problems differently. Creating a character for Marvel Crisis Protocol is, there's nothing quite like it because it doesn't apply to any of the other games we make. Um, everything is kind of its own unique challenge and feeling. Uh, all right, let's find this strap here. I'm just going to keep everything pretty much in line with my colors. Overall, I think one of the best things about Mini Strav and from the planning perspective, at least for, for me, is that so much of what we do has to stay internal, that we all do get, it sounds corny, but we get genuinely excited to have an opportunity to like tell you guys stuff. <laughs> and so getting to put together a program that's just so many, um, you know, roadmaps and reveals and lesson plans that are just going to help people, you know, A, understand where, where we're going with certain things and B, um, you know, get, get some real lessons out of the, the hobby streams as well that they can take into their painting is just really, like, that's what, that's the, the thing I'm most excited about that's not a particular panel, but just a whole, a whole vibe of getting to share um, because, you know, sharing is very a very specific process with us, typically. Absolutely thought you were going to hit us with sharing is caring. And sharing is caring. And, and I was so we intend really to care a both, lot. Both excited <laughs> and, like, disgusted. But then you went a different direction. And I have to be honest, I'm pretty disappointed about it. Like, there's a part of me that just wanted to, like, throw down the paintbrush and be like, I'm out. I'm sorry, bud. I know. If we're not, if we're not making terrible like what what is sharing is caring it's not a what's that called uh i don't know i can't think of the word i told you i'm i'm very i'm very vacation brained right now it's not an idiom it's something else but i can't think of what it is maybe it's an idiom quick and find the answer Ask the Googs. Uh, as for the, the website, um, I know everyone 
was expecting it to be by the end of the month. And just as a heads up, those are always our best estimates. Um, it is it is so imminent, but I dare not give it a date or a time uh, again. <laughs> it's like the uh, it's like the gopher from Groundhog's Day. You don't want to scare it. You got to make sure that it feels comfortable to come out of its little hidey hole. If it gets if it gets you know, accosted or it gets too aggressive, it's going to get scared. It's going to run back into its burrow. Six more weeks and no, no new website. That's how it works. Oh, do, 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 do. Favorite mini from the new core set? Oh, that's a toughie. Um, let's think here. Let's think, think, think. I think my favorite favorite mini from the new core set it's probably iron man or black widow um black widow is really cool because uh i, pr I initially proposed the tiger knee the muay thai like knee kick as an idea for her pose um and then not only did that get used but the big brains in our sculpting and engineering department along with Dallas came up with the exceptionally cool idea to have her uh, Muay Thai knee kicking an Ultron drone and having it explode, which was super awesome. Um, so I have a bit of a, I have a bit of a soft spot for that one because it's always fun when your pose idea winds up getting used. Um, but Selfishly, um, Iron Man's another one of my picks for that because we did get to work with Marvel on kind of creating that suit design. So, you know, every so every so often we get our, our opportunity to kind of take existing characters or take costume designs or ideas and create kind of our unique spin on them, our, our Marvel Crisis Protocol universe look, if you will. And so that Iron Man uses a couple of different styles from various suits um, and is a unique, kind of a unique Tony Stark armor to the Crisis Protocol universe. So much like Black Widow Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, was unique and a couple of the others that we've talked about are unique looks and, and everything. Those are always really fun to work on because, you know, you get to take elements that you really love or kind of iconic designs to the character and reimagine them in ways that fit into, as we've talked about, you know, the Crisis Protocol universe is heavily influenced by the 616, the traditional Marvel canonical universe, but by the very nature of being not 616, but its own, its own game, its own universe, and having to do things slightly differently. Well, it looks and feels almost identical. There are slight differences. There are. There are definitely things that are not the same. And so we got to take, you know, elements of some of the iconic um, classic Iron Man legs and some of his newer, like, chest designs and all of that and throw them together into something that, from a corset perspective, is also really exciting. Um, you know, because it's the introduction. It's the... For a lot of players, it'll be the first Iron Man that they had get their hands on, and it will be the Iron Man that was born of Crisis Protocol. So I think that's just neat. Uh, organized play reveals. Well, there is a... That's the color I want, yes. Um, there's going to be a panel for Crisis Protocol that's going to explore different game modes and stuff. So we are obviously going to cover standard play, non-standard play, a lot of that stuff. So that panel will have some things um, in it. I don't know how much dedicated organized play discussion is going to be happening in most of the panels. Is we covered a lot of that kind of initial idea and stuff at Adepticon earlier in the year, so there's not a ton of new developments 
going on right now, but you never know what'll sneak into a discussion or a panel. There's always, there's always things to discuss. This skin tone is one that I've never used before, so let's see how we like it. Oh, I kind of like it. It's pretty good. I don't know if we've shown this yet, but one of the things about this Winter Soldier here is that there are two head options. There's the option with this kind of like uh, Captain America 2 face mask, and then there is the classic or iconic Winter Soldier uh, head that's also on the original Winter Soldier sculpt where he's got the, you know, the little raccoon mask. The classic bandit mask, I guess. Okay. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Let's keep cruising here so that we can get through this guy. My hope here is, is that we'll... It's been a while since we've painted somebody to a tabletop standard, so that's my goal today. My goal is to get this Bucky Barnes ready for the tabletop in about an hour, which means we're just looking for good solid base coats. We'll do some washing, a tiny bit of highlighting, and we'll call it good. But if it's not the cleanest or the best looking thing we've ever done, that's all right. We've done a decent amount of like, here's some long form technique, here's this other stuff. But I kind of want to just put the pearl curl stuff through some rapid fire paces and uh, sure, why not? It should be a really bright red, but it'll be fine. And normally what I would wind up doing if I was at home and I brought all my stuff is I would do all the base work and then like we've done on a couple of the last streams that um, I've done, I'd pull out my oil paints and I'd do a bunch of oil washing and do some mixed media stuff. I'm gonna be going over that on one of my paint streams for sure during mini strap. So if you wanna see how that kind of works out and applies, um, we'll have an opportunity to spend a little bit of extra time on it, I think. I think that one's 90 minutes and discuss you know, how I approach it. But for here, we're just gonna We're just gonna do classic acrylic stuff. Classic acrylic speed painting techniques. Nothing fancy, nothing special. Washes, highlight, maybe we'll do a little dry brushing. Who knows, we might get crazy. I'm just gonna do this crate really quick since it's technically part of the mini. We're not gonna get to the base, but that's okay. I think it's okay. You don't have to think it's okay, but I think it's okay. All right, let's see. My go-to brush size is typically a size two. So I, I like to have, I think the size twos, um, they, hold, they hold a good amount of paint. They have, as long as you have a nice quality brush, they have an excellent tip. Um, I'm actually using a one right now because the two that I have available is, looks like Dallas like mashed with it. So it's not holding its point super well. Shots All right, look. fired. I have never once, I bring in new brushes from Tony's little brush stack all the time. And then I leave them here foolishly. And when I come back, those brushes that were good the last week are never good the next week. So I'm just saying, there's only one other person that I'm aware of that uses these unless Ann is coming in here and just being like, I hate these guys. I'm going to, I'm going to learn them. Could you imagine just me twisty mustache twirling yeah, just in here destroying just each brush like he's like ah this is how i'm gonna get them this that, is my greatest revenge you're gonna run out of that brush stipend <laughs> he brings his own brush every week he says this and yet here we are with all these brushes that are all like real rough they're in real rough shape i don't know i don't know if i buy it i don't know if i buy it dallas Go back and watch the tape. I mean, it's all it's all recorded, so we could find out. We could find out. Uh, Striker, my favorite from the new box, I think, is Binary Captain Marvel 
only because we've already discussed Black Widow's awesomeness um, that uh, the team put together. But I really like the uh, the continuation and the leveling up of the the sense of movement between Captain Marvel and Binary Captain Whoa. Marvel in the box. To knock over the whole thing. And so that's that's what I'm excited about the most to paint. Grab one of these. Get my washes out. Brown wash, maybe. Has the brown wash not been opened yet? He did finish the Doc Ock. Uh, he posted an image of it on his Facebook over the weekend. So during his Labor Day weekend, hopefully everyone in the States got to enjoy a little bit of their Labor Day weekend in some way or another. Um, he finished it up. Looks great. And you can check out the picture on his Facebook thing. Seriously? This one isn't open either. What happens to all the minis that are painted on our on our Twitch streams? Uh, it depends. So a lot of the times, well, almost every time, Dallas usually takes his and and finishes them up at his at it during his personal hobby time. Um, a lot of mine wind up getting donated either to play test, so we have so we have some nice, cool, like colorful minis to play with there. Um, Summer has actually inherited a couple of them. Like I'm, I'm a sucker. So when somebody's like, "This looks so cool," I'm just like, "You can have it. I'll paint another one." Yeah, I have your uh, your. It's uh, true. Iron Man on my desk. Yep. And took the Iron Man that I did. Summer's taken a couple. So really, if you run the stream, you're in the best position to wind up getting free painted minis every week <laughs> if I finish them. Um, and then I think there's a tub over here that has several of them that need to make their way to playtest or be given to other people. So I'm very loosey-goosey with mine. Um, I typically wind up painting two or three of the same mini because of it, um, but I kind of like doing that because it gives me an opportunity to explore different things or try other stuff. Um, and I'm fortunate enough that because I'm part of the QC process with the plastics and everything, Dallas often hands me a frame of test miniatures and is like, put this together and then we'll use it for stream or we'll do it other places. So I wind up with multiple versions of the same characters often. Um, So I find it's just to be, you know, just nice and easy to go in there and like take care of it. Thanks for that raid, Dragonborn Industries. This is like overall one of the big things that we wanted to try to accomplish more with Earth's Mightiest Corset was that element of storytelling, right? We've we've talked about how with the rivals panels, you know, we've really, we've really upped the level of story and narrative in those products with Josh really working hard to create the comic panels through the art and to tell the tale that way, to have the iconic scene captured by the miniatures and the terrain that they get to be displayed on and all of that. So, um, I'm going to grab transparent black. Grab a little transparent black. I want this. I want this effect to be a little stronger. So this one's also not open. Ah, oh, it's so amazing when you get a whole bunch of new paints. And they're all fresh and new and exciting. At the same time, you have to open them all. My fingers are going to be so covered in paint. It's incredible. Come on, there you go. Okay, I'll take some of the black wash, some of this transparent black ink. Just gonna mix that really roughly together. There we go. Put this on. Um, so that that kind of like aspect of storytelling, we've been playing with a lot, and then as we started working on the new course set, it was around a similar time frame. Um, as we were really getting into and exploring the narrative storytelling aspects of those rival panels. And so I think a lot of that naturally fed into our conversations about, okay, 
You know, what's the whole experience? Because miniatures games are, I think, really unique and part of what makes them so exciting. It's not just the fact that, you know, you get to think about your strategy and your tactics and how you approach the actual gameplay as much as you want, as much or as little as you want, but also um, they're, so, they're so exciting and compelling because they're effectively, they give you all of the tools you need to be able to tell your own narratives or your own stories on the tabletop. So we always talk about how we want, we want players to walk away from a game of Crisis Protocol feeling like they just told or enacted their own, their very own Marvel comic book, right? Their own Marvel adventure. And, uh, and being able to present that kind of cohesive idea right out of the gate with the core set, you know, it was something I think we kind of instinctively tried to lean into just in general with how we wanted the game to play and everything else in the original core set. But this time we were really cognizant of those goals. And so things like integrating the Ultron bots into a lot of the terrain and even determining early on, you know, Dallas kind of coming up with this vision or this idea that, hey, what if we just imagined the impetus of the corset battle was Ultron rising up and his bots coming out and it's kind of all about, you know, these classic, these classic moments between the Avengers and Ultron and uh, him working to take over the city or whatever. And so we leaned into that a lot more with putting the Ultrons into the elements and for Black Widow, and that's part of where that came from, and then the terrain and, and everything else. And Josh did a lot to bake in those narrative moments with the artwork, which then came across for the Team Tactic cards, which then came across to the rules, and everything kind of just worked together in so many different ways to create this really cool, cohesive storyline and moment, and it allows, I think it allows players the opportunity, obviously, to take that and make it their own, but also for somebody who's brand new um, to these kinds of games to quickly identify and begin to organically pick up, oh, there's so much more to this. You're not just playing, you're not just playing the game the designers or the developers gave you. You know, you're playing with these pieces these elements that really allow you to create your own worlds, your own universes, your own choices, and your own stories. And so that was a lot of fun. So, you know, the Captain Marvel going from normal form to binary form is definitely a part of that. Uh, there, is no photo, there is no photo backdrop for Earth's Mightiest in the box. We did make one, and it will be made available at some point um, online as an asset for folks. But uh, hilariously enough, by the time we got to the final packing process, we, we found out that we had stuffed the box too full. And we actually did not have room. We did not have any more room for that photo backdrop. Um, and because, you know, re relaying out and redesigning a box is a bit more work and uh, effort than we had available at the time, we were like, well, we'll just make it available elsewhere for folks. So we really wanted to, um, but the timing of it and by the time we kind of like figured it out, it, it, did not, it did not fit. We had put too much stuff in the package. So... But there's one that is made and designed, and it will be it will be available for folks um, at some point as a freebie for everyone to be able to download and print and use and all that good stuff. Okay. All right, so. Just with that shade wash, we're sitting in a really good spot here. I need, I need, I opened this, but then I never put it out like a fool. I need this. 
So I'm just going to use some of this white blue as my one of my black highlights. And then I have this warm neutral gray for my other highlight. So I'm going to use this for this. This for this one. And then we've got our ochres. So now what I'm just gonna do is I just want to quickly go through and establish some some good highlights on everything. And I probably need to hit this with the hairdryer so Anne should turn off the mic. Yeah. Sick. All right, with the magic of time speeding up because of the hair dryer, we can dive in and we can start. <laughs> Wearing in a couple of highlights here, so we'll just kind of go in. Do that one. Corners here, do some stretches. And so with this this kind of level, I just kind of want to put in, you know, again, not looking to enter this guy into the worthy. I just want to look good on the tabletop, which means I'm playing with the two-ish feet away idea. So I just want to like use my highlights as an opportunity to add texture and contrast. Um, so if we get a little messy, that's okay. It's a lot of, you know, it's looking for those little like zings of, zings of light or those little areas where maybe we can add some visual interest because each highlight is going to push the darks back into more dark and it's going to keep the lights into more lights. But you can be sort of rough with this stuff and it's going to work out just fine from the distance that we're going to have it be on. The other thing to remember is that paint will usually dry. Uh, darker than it goes on. So if you feel like you really blew something out and it looks too bright, you can always blend it out a little bit, but you can also probably trust that as it sets in, it'll dull down a bit and that will help smooth it out as well. And another trick that you can use if you have the extra time is after you do this step, you just go back over with a nice thin glaze and you can glaze everything back down and um, pull those colors kind of back together. If we have time, we might hit that because we're moving along pretty well here. So. But again, there's nothing, you don't have to be precious about this. It's almost like an overbrush. And that's fine. Just find that nice little middle tone between your extreme highlight and your midtone. And then what we'll go back through is we'll create a extreme highlight and we'll hit it again. 
and that will help push our contrast and everything. Give additional form and shape to everything and all of that. So, important to remember that because your eyeballs can only see so much, light doesn't work the way it should at the scale that miniatures are at. So we have to do the work for our eyes. We have to go in and give shape and form and volume and all that good stuff to the mini. And that's the difference between a miniature looking flat or kind of like a, you know, like a toy, right? Just flat color, big old flat blocks of color versus a stunning miniature where you can see the volumes and the shapes and all that. It's all about you as the painter, as the artist, putting those things in for the eye to see. Now the thing that I love about miniatures painting though, is that even though a traditional artist who works on a canvas or stuff like that is also doing that, they have to they have to think harder about it because they don't have the natural 3D shape to help inform where their brush is going. So, you know, you have to be able to cheat or to trick the eye by knowing how shapes work and how light plays and all of that. And while that's still really important to be a ultimately a super successful minis painter, because the miniature is in 3D, and you can see how the light naturally plays over it, all you have to do is accentuate that. Um, it makes it, to me, it just makes it make more sense. Like I don't understand how to create three dimensions on a 2D surface, but I have always felt like I understood, even if it took a lot of practice to get to it. Um, I've always felt like I understood what the mini was asking me to do in order to bring it to life in a better 3D environment because I could rely on the sculpting itself to inform my decision making and to inform my brush strokes. So let the mini let the mini do some work for you as well, right? Like Follow the light and the way that it falls, and it's just your job to make the way that light kind of naturally wants to fall, to just bring it out for the eye to clearly see. And if you do that, nine times out of 10, you're gonna come up with a really stunning looking result. That's gonna look great on the tabletop. and even a guide to take you well into starting your journey on the path to the worthy if that's you know ultimately where you as a painter and a hobbyist want to try to go or to just simply take your painting to the next level sometimes you know even though a lot of paths have destinations built into them we're not always trying to go to the end of the road Sometimes our destination is in the middle of that path. Like maybe you just wanna, maybe you just wanna be able to turn in a bronze. Maybe just getting that bronze coin is enough. And that's all you want out of your painting. And that, that level makes you happy and you get to explore and play and mess around and it's all you ever need. Maybe you wanna go to a silver. Maybe you wanna get all the way to a gold. Who knows? Your, it's your journey. You know the destination. Just because the trail goes all the way to the end doesn't mean that that's where you belong or you want to even go. Sometimes it's just nice to visit, Anne. Sometimes I get I get the feeling that I want to visit silver. Yeah? Yeah. I just, that's where I want to go visit the silver coins in the worthy and I'm like, oh, I was here and thank God I'm back home in bronze. <laughs> you know? I did it. I was there. Kind of like a family vacation. Never been more happy to see everybody that I love and haven't seen in a while and catch up, but dear God, am I happy that I'm home in my own bed again. Not, not in a basement, sleeping on an air mattress with nine other people. I can't, that's not my life. That's not where I'm meant to be. 
but it's definitely where I like to visit. So, just because a mountaintop exists doesn't mean that you have to be at the top of the mountain. And now let's go in and hit our leather pouches. Let's kind of tuck these in. I'm gonna be honest, Ann, I haven't looked at the chat in a while, so if I've missed anything, you just shout at me. You are good. I Great. think everyone is in celebrating the, the use of the uh, hair dryer. Well, as you should, you know, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't have a good hair dryer, you're just, you know, you don't need a hair dryer, kind of like how you don't need a sports car, but it'll get you places faster. Now, I do have a question for you about the hair dryer you used. Yeah, though. yeah, yeah. Um, have you ever used that method to move along with a quickness and the heat has negatively impacted the miniature? Uh, with hard plastic, no. So if you're working with something in resin or in a soft plastic, so some of the, uh, some of the original, like, Legion stuff, the Stormtroopers and Rebel Troopers and things like that. Um, or if you're working on a, say, a, um, oh my gosh, brain fog, hold on, hold please. Uh... The uh, Vader versus Luke. I can't remember the name of it now because the brain fog. But that that pack happened to be in resin. So if you're working on resin or like not a hard plastic material, you do have to be very careful because those those materials are heat sensitive. So they will warp. Um, they will soften and they can they can denature and, and everything. Um, now, if you get crazy with the hair dryer, you can get hard plastic to the point that it will denature, as a couple of folks in the chat are talking about, but you have to really work at it. Like, I've never had it happen because typically you blast it, you know, you blast the area with the hair dryer for like 30 seconds and then you let it cool. You can always be a little more careful as well, you know, if you're working with a thinner part. Um, then you probably want to be careful with your heat, but overall, you know, if you're being sensible and you're not just like baking the thing, you'll be fine. Um, and you can always use, you know, you can always use the, uh, the cool button cause that will, you know, just blowing air on it, even if it's not super hot, will speed the dry time as well, right? You don't have to use the high heat option. You can use the low heat option. Um, it just comes down to your comfort level and where you're at and and largely the material you're working on. Just being aware of just being aware of that is a big thing, you know. So so by and large, right? Like your if you're if you're sensible with the hair dryer, um, and you're not just and you're not just holding it there for minute upon minute upon minute, uh, you'll be fine. But it it is like anything, it is possible. You know, you can you can heat anything to the point of like problems. Just so be aware. Be aware, watch it, you know, go slow. Even even slow with a hair dryer is still faster than without the hair dryer. So 
Boop. I'll give them those beautiful, beautiful L'Oreal hair sheens. Because he conditions regularly. Here as well on the forehead and stuff. Get under the eyes, and you'll notice that I'm not even going to bother going back and doing the eyes here because they're perfectly fine in shadow. It makes them look more sinister and spooky. And also, it's just the fits the level at which we're painting at here, which is tabletop standard. So. Well, the face is typically a spot you want to spend the extra time on because it's the first thing that most people look at. Because as humans, we are absolutely inclined to look at faces first. They're that important to us. Uh, with this with this fellow, with this Bucky Barnes, because of how the mask and everything else in the mini works, there's no real reason to go in and do the eyes because they're just hidden in shadow and scary now. Okay, and then... I need to go here. Oh, right. I got this right here. Perfect. And we'll just quickly go into knock in some highlights on this. So we're going to go back in and highlight the pants really quick. Cloth, we might just kind of push that a little higher than we would have otherwise. Come up over here. Bring that out. Get over here. And so here I'm just following kind of like the natural folds of the cloth and using that as my little guide. Um, because the pants aren't nearly as dark as the blue-black elements, the boots and the gloves and everything. Um, I'm looking for a little bit of a less, like a little less stark difference between my contra and my contrast. And that'll make this material feel different from the other material. So whereas the gloves and the vest and everything have these really bright specular highlights where they're kind of bouncing the light off, I can make the pants feel more like cloth if I make my uh, highlights a bit more broad and smoother. And I'm achieving that by just doing a really quick two brush blend where I take my paint, I layer it on and then I use the other brush to kind of like smooth it out, to blend it out. And because this isn't quite as shiny or as harsh, say these ones up here, it's going to make this feel more like cloth rather than a hard leather or some kind of like shiny material. And this is another trick. So you can use the exact same colors across all of your different materials. But if you use different techniques to highlight, highlight and establish shadows, they'll still feel different because light plays differently over different materials. So. Think about a white t-shirt next to a white, you know, music player, like an MP3 player. One is super glossy and shiny and the light like reflects harsh, hard off of the hard white polished surface. And the other one is a shirt. So the light has a much softer, non-reflective kind of glint, right? And your eyes trained to understand how light works and everything, because we, if 
we're fortunate enough to have our vision and all that stuff. We likely see colors and light at work all the time. Doop -a -doop -a -doo. Yeah, mini extravaganza is gonna be a great time. So I'm looking forward to getting to hang out. I know a bunch of people in the studio are very excited to spend a few days just chilling and talking about things and showing what's next on the horizon. Looking back at some of the design and development processes that we used for things. Get a little insight into what's coming next. Of course, we won't be spoiling everything, but it should give you a pretty good idea of kind of where we're going and be a nice little meal before the next big roadmap happens at Adepticon. Really worked out, I, I think, a nice cadence for information release and everything where, you know, we get that early year hit at Adepticon and we can kind of show off a nice sizable roadmap and then we culminate closer to the end of the year as we roll into the next one with mini Strav and the two kind of play with each other perfectly. It means that you as the audience always kind of know what's coming next and what to expect, whereas while still maintaining a lot of that excitement and anticipation, you know, it's never fun to know everything too soon. Because one of the most fun things is to just speculate wildly. Say, well, clearly they're going to do this because I think it would be a great idea. And here are my clues. And then someone else is like, you're crazy. They're clearly going to do this. And here are my clues. And then somebody's like, but what if they did this? Wouldn't that be awesome? And people are like, oh, yes, that would be. Or, nah, you're nuts. That wouldn't be awesome. It would be super awesome. And then eventually the announcement happens and everyone's like, I accept this. This was cool. I like it. But it'll never live up to your hopes. Because, well, they were your hopes, right? And that is why anticipation is so cool. Because it could be anything. It could be a boat. And in Dallas's case, it is a boat. He owns two boats. He lives on one. Speeds on the other, like a madman. All right, and we're just going to grab a little bit of buff. Same thing here. <gasps> Four minutes. We can do it. We can do it. Probably being too precious about the cloth, but I want to just put in a little bit more, a little bit more. But we're going to finish this guy. We're going to do it. I believe in you. I know. Well, if you hold me strictly at a timeline, we might not make it. But we're going to try. We're going to try, gosh darn it. All right. I'm going to leave that, I'm gonna I leave don't that know, the way chat. it is. Should we, should we give him an extra, like, no, two minutes? No, you should. How much do I have? Three minutes? You have I'm gonna three minutes. I'm going to finish in three minutes. All right. Watch it happen. Watch it happen. Because all we got to do is we just got to go in and... Boop, 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 boop. Again. And if you want, I think if you want, uh, maybe he's not. I can't remember if we talked about, I don't think Dallas is doing a Metalocity class for Mini Strav, but he's definitely talking about doing one for Adepticon. So, if you ever want to learn the ins and outs of how to paint really good looking true metallic metals, Dallas is your guy. He's one of the one of the best there are at it in the world. And I don't say that. The best painters in the world say that. So BG, I'm not sure what you mean by spoilers, because I'm uh, I've been here for all the streams and I don't I, did you spoil Ahsoka on stream? 
What? Did you? Uh, it depends which Ahsoka. We confirmed Ahsoka for Legion at like a mini Strav a while ago, and then. Oh, you are talking about mini Strav. I was thinking about this show. <laughs> oh no, no, I don't think we talked about that at all. But definitely mini yeah. Strav. We've had, we've had a couple of cheeky moments where we've talked about some things that are like so far off that they still haven't even materialized yet. Yeah, what I what I will say is that y'all should look alive for various streams because while the roadmaps have like the most I would say like raw news in them, um, there are lots of other opportunities to learn interesting things throughout the weekend. So make yourselves uh, available. I want to do one thing. I got one minute left. One thing. I just need to highlight this star so that I can say I highlighted it and then we're out. Let's get a little, a little yellow, a little red. In there like that. A little more yellow. Back to my initial red. Remind me what the word is for like the angle that is the the prime angle that the miniature. The romance angle. The romance angle, right? We, we so talk about the romance angle. I will say that while the romance angle is certainly a true concept, that for some reason, because of, with what you've done to get this table ready today, the back view of this miniature is also pretty interesting too all right we're done you did it we did it just under the wire it's 2 the, p.m right now i know i know that's why i put the brush i saw two i was like putting the brush down i could go to 201 <laughs> and technically probably be fine the only thing i didn't do which i probably will go back and do is i didn't get that hydra logo red i'm gonna get that hydra logo right now now it's a crate so we could argue that yes it's just gonna be it's just gonna be metal we could also argue the crate is part of the base I think there's a lot of ways to cheat it here, but there we go. So this is our completed one hour, the Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes, coming from the new Earth's Mightiest Core set. Uh, and as far as like being a tabletop ready mini, this guy looks phenomenal. He's all good to go. We'll just finish the base and call it good. All right, thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to tune in tomorrow, 1 p.m. Pacific, as Dallas Kemp will be painting more stuff from Earth's Mightiest. Uh, I don't remember what, but something cool. And then, of course, next week, we will not be on Tuesday, Wednesday. Instead, we'll be coming at you with three full days of content starting on Thursday, uh, not October, September 6th, 7th, 8th, 14th. Holy cow, where did the time go? Yeah, it's the 5th right now, bud. I don't, I don't know. None of this makes any sense. September 14th, 15th, and 16th, Mini Stravaganza is going to be going on. Schedule is up now. You can check that out on Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Where? Oh, it's down now? Well, it'll go back up later. I don't know. You'll see the schedule. If you didn't see it already, you'll see it again. Just be sure to block out some time during those three days. We're going to be doing all kinds of hobby stuff. We're going to have dev panels. We're going to be talking about roadmaps. We're going to be doing it all. Till next time, thank you so much for joining me. I've been Will. You've been great. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.